I want to talk to you all about something serious now. We've got to get serious here. Serious, we say in the South. Serious. I can't see you all because of all them lights. But I know that out here tonight we've got a lot of you men. you got them coats and ties on. Hurting your neck right now. Got them big old jobs. Got a lot of stress involved. You're eating a lot of eggs, a lot of milk. Getting that cholesterol built up in your heart. And if you ain't had your heart surgery yet, relax because it's coming, Clyde. I guarantee you. I mean, there's country clubs you can't get into today that you don't have your heart surgery. You know what I'm saying? I had heart surgery. I wrote a book about it. Called it, They Tore Out My Heart and Stomped That Sucker Flat. And I tell you what, let me say, I didn't have the classic bypass. What I had was something different. See, in the aortic valve of the heart, where the blood goes out of the heart, there's supposed to be three little leaflets in that valve that open and close real tight. For some reason, I was born with only two of those little leaflets in my heart. It was 1946, right after the Great War. Could have been a shortage on them little boogers, probably. <laughs> Either that or my daddy didn't get a good toe hole, one or the other. Man. <laughs> Somebody sitting down here just said, damn, brother, I don't believe I had a toe left. You know? <laughs> but that's what happened to me. It didn't hurt, you know, it didn't cause me any problems, didn't hurt anything like that. But I, uh, I went to see my doctor. I was 35 years old. Now, I'll be honest with you. I know we've probably got doctors in, in the audience, and I'm going to offend you, but I don't like doctors. I really don't. i tell you, well, ain't nothing personal. But we know how much money you make. <laughs> you drive in big old Mercedes cars. You live on them big old houses out there in West Paces and Blackland and Tuxedo and them kind of places. But you're too cheap to pop for no new magazines in your office, right? <laughs> you ever notice that? I walk in my doctor's office, picked up Time Magazine, Roosevelt's on the cover. <laughs> Teddy. <laughs> my doctor's weird anyway. I called my doctor one time on the phone. He said, what's wrong with you? I said, I got a bad case of diarrhea. He put me on hold. But anyway, I'm 35 years old, and I walk in my doctor's office, and he comes out, and he's got two x-rays. He said, here's the x-ray we took your heart five years ago. Here's one we took five minutes ago. Notice how much larger your heart is today than it was then. I said, what y'all going to do about that? He said, we're going to send you to Emory Hospital. Man going to take a knife, going to cut you from your neck all the way down to your navel. Another man's going to walk in a room with a black and decker power saw. We saw him right through your sternum. We're going to put a new valve in you and sew you back up and charge you $25,000. <laughs> I said, do what? <laughs> That's the problem with doctors. They only give you the big picture. You know what I'm saying? They only give you the big picture. Don't tell you. The they ain't nothing to heart surgery. You asleep. They cut off your toes. Now you wouldn't care. It's all them things they do to you before and after your heart surgery get you crazy. <laughs> Doctor I never seen before in my life came to my room, had the audacity to ask me was there any history of hemophilia in my family. <laughs> I said we had a second cousin one time I wasn't real sure about. You know? <laughs> His name's Keith. He's a waiter at the <laughs> The biggest thing about heart surgery is tubes. Tubes. If you would think about it, ladies and gentlemen, please nobody use your hands to count and embarrass yourself. But if you would think about it, there are seven places in the human body where you can stick a tube without having to make no new hole. You got them all? <laughs> yes, ma'am, that's one of them. It certainly is. <laughs> now, I am by no means a religious expert, but I believe in my heart that the good Lord in all his infinite wisdom didn't have no intention for nobody to be sticking no tubes in at least two of them holes. <laughs> Otherwise, he wouldn't have made them so tight.
Makes sense to me. The problem with heart surgery, they got seven holes and nine tubes. They got to make two new holes in you. They put one on each side of your navel. That's for your stomach tubes. Don't hurt going in. You asleep. Coming out is another ball game. A couple days after my surgery, I was lying there in my bed, relaxing with a jar of morphine. Heart surgery will change your attitude about narcotics, I guarantee you. You a whole new perspective. Doctor I'd never seen before coming to my room, big smile on his face, said, This morning I'm going to take your stomach tubes out. I said, Great. Next thing I said is, When I get off this seat, I'm going to knock that smile right off your face. But it's amazing what medical science can do. It's incredible what they can do. What they were able to do is take out my old faulty aortic valve and replace it with the aortic valve of a little pig. A little pig named Jerome. <laughs> well, people say, you know, you're part pig now. Do you feel any different? Every time I pass a barbecue joint, my eyes fill with tears. That's one thing. <laughs> and every afternoon about four o'clock, I get this incredible urge to go outside and make love in the mud. You know how hard it is to find somebody else having the same urge as you? I do feel more intelligent. I really do feel more... I don't know if you know this, but pigs are the most intelligent animals we have in the animal kingdom. They're a lot more intelligent than dogs or cats or horses. I mean, they really are. They teach you pigs do everything today. they got Tennessee walking pigs. they got C&I pigs. I mean, these things... I should have known how intelligent pigs are. I come from a rural background. You know that. Down in Coweta County, down in Moreland, Georgia, where I grew up. We had a lot of hog farmers down. We had this one on a hog farm one time, and I should have known how smart pigs are. We had this one hog farm one time, and he had these two sows. Now, this ain't no dirty story. This is an agricultural story. And he had these two sows, see, and he wanted to have some little bitty pigs, but he didn't have no male, so he didn't know what in the world to do. But he had a friend up the road, had one, old Jake, they called him. And he called his friend up, and he said, could I bring my two sows up there and have mated with old Jake? And the guy said, well, bring them on up here. It'll be fine. He picked them two big old heavy hogs up. Got mud all over his outfit and everything. And he put them on the back of his pickup truck and drove them up there and let them out in that pen with old Jake. Some wild and broke out there. I mean, you got 6,000 pounds of pork and heat of passion. You got something going, you know. <laughs> there was all kinds of onking and grunting going on. And it was over and the fellow said, how am I going to know if this took? And he said, well, you get up in the morning and look out. And if your pigs are wild in the mud, it didn't take. If they in the sunshine, everything's all right. He got up the next morning, he looked out, and his two pigs were wallowing in the mud. He called a fellow up and said, bring them on back up here. Picked them two hogs up again, put them back in the pickup truck, drove them back up. It was even wild this time. The dogs got to barking real loud. <laughs> Had to hose them down with cold water. The fellow's wife then broke out in a sweat. I mean, it's some kind of thing going on here. And he took them home, and the next morning he looked out, and they still wallowing in the mud. He took them up there a third time, same thing happened. Brought him back the next morning. He couldn't bear it. He was tired of them hogs. He couldn't bear to look out. He told his wife, said, Honey, look outside and tell me, are my hogs wallowing in the mud or are they in the sunshine? She peeked out the window and said, Neither one. He said, Well, where in the world are they? She said, Well, they in the cab of the truck honking the horn. You know? <laughs>